Good day. Thank you for tuning in to this 2017 primary election candidate forum for Olympia City Council, position five. The forum is presented by the League of Women Voters of Thurston County and Thurston County Media. The League is a nonprofit organization that encourages the informed and active participation of citizens in their government. The League neither supports nor opposes candidates or, or parties. We are nonpartisan. The League registers new voters, studies issues, and advocates for its positions with the governing bodies. Despite its name, the League is open to both men and women of age 16 and up. I'm Mary Moore from the League, and I'll be moderating this forum. The candidates for Olympia City Council Position 5 are Deborah Lee, Alan Miller, Lisa Parshley. This forum, for this forum, each candidate will have two minutes for the opening statement. Then I will ask them questions in alternating order. The person first asked the question will have two minutes for a response, followed by one minute from the other candidates. Then there will be one minute for closing statements at the end. We'll begin with opening statements from the candidates, beginning with Deborah Lee. Thank you. My name is Deborah Lee and I'm running for Olympia City Council position five. I'm a third generation Washingtonian born in Auburn. I'm the daughter of a gold star orphan. My grandfather was killed when the, his B-17 crashed into the English Channel. My mother's uh, family were farmers from the Midwest and my father's people were farm workers from California. They moved to Auburn during World War II to work for Boeing. There are now four generations of aerospace machinists in my family and four generations of veterans from the Army, Navy, and they served in the Europe, Korean, and Vietnam and um, Iraq wars. I am committed to um, family and community. That's why I'm running for office, to help make Olympia a better place for all of us. I am committed to smart growth to ensure we protect the unique characters of our neighborhoods and create high density living in a revitalized downtown that works for everyone. I'm the director for the Birth to Five Head Start program at the Nisqually Tribe and we serve low income and at risk children and families. We currently serve over 60 children and families, many of whom are military families whose fathers are being deployed right now to South Korea, South Korea and uh, Afghanistan. I served eight years in Olympia as the State Human Rights Commissioner and was recently appointed by Governor Inslee to the Early Childhood uh, Advisory Council for the Department of Early Learning. I have the experience and commitment working for all Olympians, and I'd be honored to earn your vote and support. And Alan? I'm Alan Miller. I was raised by two parents who taught me to give back to the community, and I've been doing that ever since I arrived in Olympia in 1982. And I'm running for city council to make our community the most sustainable, prosperous, and beautiful community and state capital in the, in the world. I have served the Olympia citizens for many years. I've served two terms on the Olympia School Board to make our schools the best in the world. I've created uh, family wage jobs, not only in my business as an environmental lawyer, but also as ch uh, chair of the Chamber of Commerce. I've served two terms on the Planning Commission and um, was involved in the creation of the North Capitol Campus Heritage Park from the Law Enforcement Memorial out to the Fountain and uh, Percival Landing. I served uh, as president of the United Way uh, board and was instrumental in making sure that Drexel House uh, for the Homeless was built and also uh, creating Habitat for Humanity houses. 
I also was one of the leaders for the Metropolitan Parks District that has allowed us to uh, create LBA Woods Park and also Kaiser uh, Heights on the west side. The five issues I see that are most important that we need to address are homelessness uh, is the first of the, of the five. Uh, we need to make sure that we are compassionately taking care of the homeless, but that we end homelessness in Olympia. Also, with 20,000 more people coming to Olympia over the next 20 years, we need to make sure that we are creating housing for everybody at all levels, especially downtown. As an environmental lawyer, I'm concerned about sea level rise, and we need to address, make sure we're addressing that. Also, economic development, uh, as uh, more family wage jobs are going to be necessary for the people that are arriving, and then to make sure that, we're, that our public is safe with infrastructure in place. So I ask you to go to voteallenmiller.com for further information, and I'd appreciate your vote. Thank you. Okay. Lisa. Hi, I'm Lisa Parshley. I am running for Olympia City Council, position number five. I'm running because my parents raised me with a moral obligation that I need to leave this place better than I found it, and that I need to make sure that nobody is left behind in this process. The environment, we're nearing crisis levels in the environment. This is not a Republican, this is not a Democrat, this is not an independent or libertarian issue. It is all of our issues. Now, more than ever, it is important to remember that old saying, to think globally but act locally. We are going to solve the environmental issues facing our country, our world, at a local level, at a grassroots level. I see Olympia as being an important cog in that so solution. I also see that we have to keep this in mind in almost everything we do as a city council, from planning our growth in the future to helping our progressive communities develop small businesses that are green and favoring alternative energies. I agree with Alan. Homelessness has reached a humanitarian level issue in Olympia. That's because we are the downtown center of many counties, from Grays County to Lewis County to Mason County, as well as Thurston County. Everybody that has approached this issue around the world and around this country has found housing first is absolute must. That housing first does require wraparound services in some cases, but we need to have also in the interim low barrier shelters and warming facilities in the winter. I believe in the people of Olympia. We can do this together. We have the experts, we have the people who are passionate, and we have nationally renowned homeless experts. We can do this together. I'm Lisa Parshley. I'm running for Olympia City Council, position number five. Well, thank you very much. The questions that I'm going to ask you, um, you may have already talked about, but nonetheless, I'm going to ask you. So we'll start with Deborah. You have two minutes to answer the question, and then Alan and Lisa, you each have one minute, and then we'll move on to Alan. Okay, is that clear? Good. So, Deborah, what is your primary objective if you are elected to the council? Well, my primary objective is to work with um, making sure that Olympia is safe and um, viable for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, right now, we have a homelessness crisis. Mm -hmm. And it is, it, with the projected growth um, mm -hmm. that is, I, I believe, by 40% in the next decade, increase um, in the next decade, we are, the problem's only gonna become worse mm -hmm. if we don't get in front of it right now. Mm -hmm. um, I know that, uh, you know, looking at, um, at the website in City Hall, right now they don't have a fully staffed human services department. And that is something that needs to be implemented right away. Mm -hmm. A human services department that can provide resources um, for intervention, prevention, and to work with the already um, uh, advocate organizations that are providing these sources, resources for the community. But City Hall needs to have um, a human services department. 
Okay, so that's something that I would definitely work on okay. implementing if I were elected. And Alan, what is your response? Homelessness is definitely the issue that I would like mm -hmm. to tackle and to solve if I'm elected uh, and have the four years to do that. Um, Salt Lake City has, a, has uh, implemented a system which I think we should look at and, and seriously implement. It's, and one of the things is to actually increase the walking and biking patrols that are, that are in downtown. But also, we should have a system where anybody could call 911 and say there's a homeless person that needs that needs assistance and so and the social worker would respond mm -hmm. and there would be a triage center um, actually right across from inner city transit the the their providence is putting in a, a uh, community mental health center mm -hmm. something like that a, a center where people can be brought and if they have mental illness problems they could be put into that you know they could be helped in that system if they have alcohol or drug addiction problems they could be um, put mm -hmm. into you know to help in that system if they need a job you know they could be helped in that system so that that's uh, I would okay. see a compassionate 911 system being implemented Lisa I've been asked this question before and I struggle a little bit with it because I kind of see the three issues are interrelated. Homelessness, environment, and actually providing a progressive small business so that we have living wages in this town. If I was to pick one over the other, I would have to agree with Alan, it would be the homelessness issue. I'm 100% again for housing first, but I know that this is a process to get the folks to actually getting housing. Mm -hmm. So I'm also for pushing the city to support and develop a well um, represented coalition that has the services and the identification ability to provide the list of people who need the housing. In the process, once you hit the street, we need to have temporary shelters, low barrier shelters. The city needs to support that. In the winter, the city needs to help support the warming uh, shelters. Mm -hmm. In these two shelters, we need to have the people that can identify those who are going to need the housing first. Housing first needs to be started now, not five, 10 years from now. I support the home fund that the city's looking at. Um, so if I was to say a primary issue, it'd be homelessness, but the others are very close. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you all. Very thoughtful. All right, Alan. Now, you have the next question. What can the City Council do to help support racial justice and equity issues in Olympia? Well, we need to make sure that our police force is uh, trained um, so that there, are, you know, that any, any bias is, is stopped that they're that that is out of the system um, make sure that everybody is treated uh, equally as human beings as mm -hmm. we all are and, and needs to uh, um, that, so that there can be no um, issue of racial bias in in Olympia and I know that's that's difficult but that but training uh, needs to be done uh, with our police force. I believe uh, Ronnie Roberts, our cur current police chief, is is on board with this, and and uh, but needs to to implement uh, further training because we do have a a young police force. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the baby boomer uh, generation mm -hmm. has retired recently, and so we need to make sure that these uh, newer police officers are are tr are adequately trained, and we also need to make sure that we're hiring. Um, you know all. All, all walks of life, all, all ethnicities, um, and make sure that we have staff and employees of the city of Olympia that uh, do reflect our community. Thank you. And Lisa, your response to My this My response question. is, uh, in a, I refer to an enlightenment I've had in the last year, which is the fact that in every city, and in particular our city, as well as many of the cities in this country, we have a group of invisible people what do I mean by invisible people? They are the people that are actually not represented by the government because they are not there. Their voice is not heard. We do not see them. We can believe we're liberal and conservative and moral, but in reality, we're not seeing all the people in our community. So the first thing I would do in our city is I would conduct an audit of our own city government, our staff. What is our hiring and firing? What are our promotion uh, policies? What are we doing to train for understanding that there are people in our community that we are not representing, that we need to bring them into City Hall? 
this is a kind of a moment of enlightenment that I would like to have the city take on, to realize, recognize, and acknowledge we have people that we don't represent. Thank you. Deborah. Well, um, as a human and civil rights activist for more than two decades, this is something that's very close to my heart. Um, I know that right now uh, the police department um, are being trained in community uh, policing mm -hmm. um, and they're, they're doing a good job. They could do better. Um, they, uh, the other uh, department that I noticed that the City Hall doesn't have is a civil rights department. They have a civil rights or social justice committee um, but we need a fully staffed civil rights department that um, has enforcement power. Um, and, uh, you know, for social justice and equality and inclusion, um, I'm the only person of color running um, in this r race. So it would um, start with electing people of color uh, to have a voice at the table. And um, we could start there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Very thoughtful responses. Now, Lisa, you get the third question. You have two minutes. What would be your City of Olympia budget priorities for the next four years? Budget priorities for the City of Olympia. Um, one, I would tackle the homelessness issue. I would tackle that in a manner that I would put money towards forming task forces and co coalitions to um, provide the, uh, well, the guidance on things like the warming shelters, okay, low barrier housing, looking into purchasing land potentially to even build um, shelters of our own that provide housing and long-term housing for those who need wraparound services. I would look into those features for the homelessness in our budget. The second would be, I would continue the effort in our climate change planning. I would make sure that we continue the efforts of Rich Huey that has gone through, for example, and replaced all the uh, light bulbs with LED light bulbs and reduced our energy consumption and therefore reduced our carbon footprint. Um, enacting a climate change plan is going to take money and it's going to take investment by the city. For example, they just ran a carbon footprint uh, plan uh, assessment of Olympia for the city, and now they're running one for the whole city. The first one was for the city government. The second one is for the city. These things cost money, so that would be a priority, as I would put some money towards uh, pl the climate action plan and enacting them. The last one I would do is I would seriously be looking at our own governance and asking, are we inclusive? Are we looking towards uh, having diversity in our, our, uh, for race, sexual preference, everything? But this is also going to take money because if we're going to have to change hiring prices, living wages, benefits, this is going to take money. So I would make sure that we do a fine comb over of our budget, make sure our priorities are correct, and that the voter priorities have been served, and then move on to these other things. Good. Thank you. Deborah. Well, <clears throat> I know that um, money is a very precious resource, um, especially when it um, concerns uh, serving our community and our most vulnerable community. Um, so I, again, you know, I would look at um, ensuring that we could either set aside some money for human services department and a civil rights department. Um, we could certainly uh, turn to other resources to collaborate, um, you know, with the tribes uh, mm -hmm. in, in um, getting some further money and some further uh, uh, finances into our uh, city hall. Um, but, y and you know, of course, the, the projected growth um, that's coming, we need to really look at um, our budget in a very thoughtful way. So not, uh, not just one population is, is getting the resources. Okay, 
Alan. So, yeah, what the budget is about, uh, the, the operating budget is about $140 million, and I have, um, that's not too different actually from, this, from the Olympia School District, which is about $100 million, and so I've managed that type of budget, and so I would look at carefully at uh, the budget, and, but my priority, as I've stated, it would be dealing with the homeless, um, and so whatever money can be um, brought to bear to get rapid rehousing going, get people into this social service network that I talked about with the 911 um, system, I would do that. Also, I've been president of the Olympia Kato Sister City Association. We have a sister city in Japan, and one of the, I've had three trips over there, and one of the things that we really need to do is to emphasize our public safety for the big earthquake that's gonna, that we know is gonna happen. We're not as prepared as they are over there, and we, so we need to look at uh, doing uh, some work on, on, the, on that ground, and I would hope to do that also. All right, all right. So now, Deborah. It's up to you to have two minutes to respond to the next question. And you all have talked about this a great deal. Perhaps you want to expand on some of your ideas. How would you work to resolve homelessness in Olympia? Well, it is a tough subject. Um, I know that there are other cities across the nation that have done a wonderful job. Um, Salt Lake City is one of them. So we really don't have to recreate mm -hmm. the will. Um, we can certainly uh, go over there and look at the plans that they put in place. Um, you know, Seattle is, is doing some wonderful work, mm -hmm. the city council up there with the homeless population up there. So it's, it's really reaching out to um, the local uh, advocates that are already working with this population um, and bringing them to the table. It's bringing the, the homeless to the table and getting their voices heard and asking them what we can do as well. Um, but definitely uh, reaching out because, you know, we're, we're just... Um, uh, everyone running in this race, we just have surface knowledge of all of this. We need to bring the deeper knowledge, the collective knowledge to the table and figure out how we can work um, on reversing this crisis together, because we're all in this together. The homeless um, population is our community, and we really need to um, to bring a coalition of folks, of voices, so we can do this in a very thoughtful uh, way to intervene, prevent, and, and get our people housed. Alan? Yeah, I've talked a little bit already about my compassionate 911 mm -hmm. system, which I think is pretty much what the, they're doing in Salt Lake City, which I think we need mm -hmm. to look at and implement mm -hmm. in addition to the, the biking and, and walking patrol downtown. But yes, we do need to have the homeless themselves involved in the process, but we also need to regionalize it. It is, Olymp you know, Olympia is, is everybody's downtown in, in Thurston County, essentially, mm -hmm. but we need to get Lacey and Tumwater and, and the county involved uh, in solving this because it is a regional problem and we need to make sure that we are rapidly rehousing people in all of, uh, in all of the jurisdictions as opposed to just Olympia. Lisa? Well, I completely agree with Deborah. The process is very complex, and I think as a city councilor, it's not your job to be the expert, it's your job to bring the experts to the table. And that includes those that are on their feet on the ground. They've been working for years on these issues, and I think we would do well to also focus on other cities, but really we need to reach out to those who are here because maybe our population is just a little bit more unique, different kinds of things. I would like to develop something that potentially takes a little bit from other cities, but is uniquely Olympia based on these experts' opinions. Next, I'd like to bring in the small business communities, the neighborhoods, and absolutely the homeless. We need to have everybody sitting at the table to find a common ground to get housing first, services where needed, but have an ability to identify those who need these services, need the housing, and care for them until they can get into their houses. Thank you. 
All right, you guys. Question number five. Alan. Yes. And again, you already have talked about this. It's the climate situation. Um, and the question is, what actions should the city council take regarding scoping and developing a climate action plan? Well, we need to uh, get the experts at the table. Um, there's no question that the sea level is rising. And so one of the things that I have been an advocate for uh, as, as the, the, one of the parks guys in, in town is, is and trail person is mm -hmm. the, the idea of the Big W Trail, which would be a trail from the west, on the West Bay side from West Bay Marina down connecting to uh, Percival Landing. Then north along the Port Peninsula, and then south along the Port mm -hmm. Peninsula, and then up East Bay. We could, we, my idea would, would basically be, you know, two good ideas at once, and one would be to have a public trail along our complete waterfront from West Bay Marina mm -hmm. out to East Bay and raise it to, uh, you know, two or three or four feet, whatever the, you know, whatever the experts yeah. are telling us we would need to do have a berm and, and that way we could, you know, again, have the public on the waterfront uh, along a trail and also protect our infrastructure downtown. Um, we also need to, you know, one of the things that being an attorney, I know we're, our courthouse is terribly uh, out of sync with what we need in, in the 21st century for a courthouse. And so, and quite frankly, in my humble opinion, it never should have been taken out of downtown. We need to bring it back downtown and, and put it uh, in a place that uh, would not be vulnerable to sea level rise. And so I guess my, one of my thoughts is, and again, this would be, you know, the, the siting would be up to the experts and, and land use uh, planners, but the old uh, city hall where the Olympian Municipal Court is now, we could actually, uh, the county and the city could collaborate because I think it would be great to have one courthouse where everybody knows if they're going to court, because right now the public is confused. If, I, yeah. if I'm in Olympia, you know, am I going to the Olympia Missile Court? Am I going to the Superior Court up mm -hmm. on the hill? Am I going to the Family Court out in uh, Mottman area? Mm -hmm. So I think uh, it would be convenient for the, and a good use of our uh, taxpayer do dollars to uh, consolidate and partner with the county on um, making sure that, that it's not vulnerable to sea level rise. Interesting, interesting. Lisa? Well, climate change is a process that is occurring and has been occurring for a long time. And I, I have to applaud the current city council. They have um, said that they will hold to the Paris Accords. Um, previous mayor has gotten us um, committed to being part of the co global covenant of mayors. 100% applaud all of this. But climate change is not something that we can solve today, tomorrow, or even 10 years from now. We need to have constant effort, constant work on this. The city council has to be continually pushing and we should not actually accept those mandates by the Paris Accord and the Global Covenant and Mayors. We should actually accelerate those. We should seek to be carbon free with things like getting into co-ops for buying electric cars so that they become more affordable for the average person of Olympia. We should be looking at every aspect of our growth plan to make sure it's green, sustainable, and progressive. This is, this is not a simple issue. We should make sure Olympia does its part to lower the carbon in this uh, region, but we should also make sure that we're not impacting global. Deborah? Yes, you know, um, right now we have um, several tribes that are in our region. Um, including uh, two tribes right here in uh, locally. And um, they have marine biologists and botanists that are already doing studies and have been doing studies and collecting data um, on this issue for many years. Um, City Hall uh, could do a better job at partnering with those tribes and, collect and, and getting that data so we can um, work together to figure out how we can stop the sea rise level and uh, refurbish our you know, shorelines and uh, bring some of our native plants um, and sea animals back um, because they are part of that uh, environment and they are what helped um, the climate. So 
uh, that is something that, that I believe we need to, to do is partner with um, the experts and bring mm -hmm. them to the table. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very thoughtful responses. We next have a question for you, Lisa. Um, how can the city council work with the Evergreen State College to encourage free speech, but discourage demonstrations that result in property damage and injuries to participants, police officers, and the general public? That's an excellent question. I have been following uh, this issue pretty closely. I have spoken to people on both sides of this issue. I think what we could act as the intermediary, the person who is the ombudsman, if nothing else, we could act as the, the person that can, the city council could be the group that actually is the neutral party and try to bring both sides of this issue together. I'm afraid, based on my conversations, that there is still a very serious divide at Evergreen College. And as a city council, we could act as a safe place for people to come and voice their opinions, find a common ground, and move on. Because there is opportunity to learn, an opportunity to grow for Evergreen, and come out of this stronger. And as a city council, we could act as the body that provides the safe place for this to occur. Mm -hmm. It is not our job to solve it. Maybe it's our job to be the peacekeepers. Very good. What is your response, Deborah? Well, uh, you know, this is the work that I do. Um, we go around uh, educating our youth on, um, you know, the right to free speech, the right to uh, peaceful assembly. And um, with that, we teach them, um, I don't want to say how to protest, but, w you know, we give them uh, education on, on uh, how to do it effectively. And the way to do it effectively is not property through property damage mm -hmm. and such. So city council can definitely um, partner with Evergreen to do workshops on, on uh, the importance of our rights um, to assemble and protest. Um, and, you know, it, it let them know that, you know, uh, with this current administration uh, back in D.C., mm -hmm. If we continue to inflict violence and property damage, they could turn that over, potentially. <laughs> I, I could see mm -hmm. this administration going in that direction, um, but mm -hmm. just educating our kids, our mm -hmm. youth. Alan, what do you think? I am a peacemaker, and I would definitely uh, think that the city council and the city uh, could serve as a conduit to, to, to bring people together, yeah. bring the administration, bring the teachers, bring the professors uh, together to, you know, talk about, pe I mean, yes, peaceful pro protest should, should go forward and uh, under the First Amendment, but, you know, violence and, and property damage is, is inappropriate. And so I think, you know, uh, being you know reasonable people, I think we could uh, be a peacemaker and bring people together to talk about it and to, and to solve that because we we don't need to be suffering this. It, it uh, yeah, you know it seems like on an annual basis. So. Oh my, it's worrisome. Question number seven, Deborah. How can the city support maintenance of the qualities that draw people to work, live? maintain a healthy business climate and recreate in Olympia? Big one. Yeah. That's a big question. <laughs> Could you repeat that, please? Yes. How can the city support maintenance of the qualities that draw people to work, live, maintain a healthy business climate and recreate in Olympia? I think um, right now uh, there is a perception of unsafe downtown Olympia. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I live on the west side and my neighbors have talked about this. Um, it's, it is very important for city hall and city council to um, work with, of course, their police department, um, again, the homeless advocates, because I think the perception is, you know, that the homeless are 
the ones that are causing this, which isn't the unsafety, which is not the case. Um, but to bring the businesses again, um, the businesses, the the population, the the folks who fear to come downtown. Um, to bring it together and to work together to make the community, to make it more of a community setting. Um, uh, you know, city council needs to, to reach out more. They need to get out um, into our communities. Um, they, need, they can't just keep sitting in city hall um, and not, you know, getting out and talking to everybody and getting everyone's perspective of what's happening in, uh, in, in Olympia. Um, we're all in this together and we really need to bring everyone together and hear their voices and come up with a, a, a solid solution. We can do this. Mm -hmm. We can absolutely do this, but we need to do it together. Ellen, what do you think about this? Well, I won't talk again about homelessness because I think we've done that, but that is a major problem mm -hmm. about our downtown, obviously. But I'm very proud of, of having led the effort for our, you know, for parks, uh, the opening up and, and creating the Metropolitan Parks District because parks are one of the things that make our area quite uh, attractive to people to come live, work, and play. Um, also, having served on the school board, I know that you know that collaborating with the, the Olympia's City Council and the school board was very helpful to make sure that we do have world-class schools because that's another attraction to our community. And um, having been, you know, chamber chair, uh, working with the local businesses uh, to make sure. I mean, I think one of the things that that the City Council has has dealt with, uh, maybe a little too slowly in my mind, was to create the 24-hour public restrooms that are now available because, you know, having the uh, the defecation and urination downtown was definitely not yeah. definitely not something that we need on people's uh, doorsteps. Uh, so, I oh, think, no. uh, you know. Uh, the schools, the parks, uh, solving hopelessness and collaborating with our local businesses uh, will um, continue to make people see that our state capital city is, is a great place to be. Okay, Lisa. Well, I would um, take the downtown strategy and actually expand it to call it the Olympia strategy for growth. In this uh, expanded version, I would make sure that the homelessness and the perception of homelessness being a problem in downtown is a vital part of it. But I would also make sure that we have in there provisions to save and nurture the old established neighborhoods in this uh, community. They're one of the selling points for a lot of folks to move here. There are also a lot of green spaces, which is super mm -hmm. important for our climate change problem. I would make sure that this expanded plan also has a mechanism to bring in all of the communities, downtown, all the neighborhoods, to make sure that everybody has a voice in how we're doing this. Because unique, Olympia is unique, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous. We need to save our downtown and the unique buildings we have, but we need to save our whole community in terms of how we plan our growth. Because this is the time to do it and not 10, 20 years from now. Wow. Good for you. You all three did a good job. That's a tough question. So we're almost done. And um, Alan, I think it's your turn to. Yes. What do you see as the three or four most important issues? Oh, my gracious. You have already gone over this. All right. I'm going to ask I'm going to ask my own question here. One of the problems that I have with downtown Olympia is parking. I am disabled and so I must drive and I must park. But it, I often do not go downtown because I can't find a parking place. What would you do about it? Well, I think one of the uh, attractions of my idea of bringing the courthouse downtown would be that I think that would bring enough employees and, em and employment from the courthouse uh, for uh, a, you know to create the demand for a parking garage uh, as part of that 
complex. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, where it's sited and maybe do we need another another one for, uh, you know, like I know Spokane has one for, you know, their shopping mm -hmm. area downtown. Um, but I think that uh, as long as it's sited in an area that's not going to be, you know, vulnerable to sea level rise, I think, you know, building a parking garage by bringing all the employees uh, downtown for a courthouse and, and also just, you know, the 5,000 more residents that we're expecting uh, downtown mm -hmm. um, over the next 20 years will create the demand to do that and I hope that somebody in your situation would then find that even though you might have to pay for a parking place you do have to do that now um, on most days uh, that uh, a parking garage would would solve your problem what do you think Lisa that's a complex issue but I, I will s uh, preface it by saying my mom had polio and spent a good deal of her life uh, disabled and I am very cognizant of this. One of the things that I've thought about and talked about with my own mother is why don't we have more disabled parking on curbside and adequate disabled parking on curbside. That being said, that would serve those who actually have difficulty getting far distances or have chairs. But I would also explore the possibility of centralized parking with better transit in the downtown area, as well as cleaning up our sidewalks for those who are in chairs, mm -hmm. can actually park in those facilities and use their chairs over our downtown sidewalks. Because having pushed my mother's wheelchair, or when her cart goes out, having to help her walk down these streets, I see there's a problem. At the same time, we don't want to build a whole bunch of parking lots. We want to centralize some of this and yet make it adequate access for those who need it for the downtown area. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Deborah. I agree with Lisa. We definitely need more curbside parking for um, the disabled uh, drivers. Um, and, you know, I don't know, right now we have metered parking um, at the various slots, at the various stalls. Um, most likely in the future, we might go to a kiosk parking where it's just centralized in the middle of the, the sidewalk, like up in Seattle. Mm -hmm. They took out the meters. Mm -hmm. um, so we would definitely need to make sure that those parking stalls um, are close to the kiosk, but also work with the um, private owners of the parking lots that are already in downtown mm -hmm. um, and ask them for more uh, disabled mm -hmm. parking spots mm -hmm. in those um, lots as well, definitely. Well, thank you guys for answering <laughs> my question. Since I had a little more time, could I just add that my mother had MS and so I also, mm -hmm. you know, had a mother in a wheelchair and it is, but it's, isn't it my understanding that, uh, and I realize that we do need more parking downtown. Um, I think the parking garage would solve that problem, but if you use a disabled pass, you can park as long as there's a space. As long as there's a space. Okay. You can park yeah, anywhere. That's, what, that's my understanding. Right. So that's true. Thank you. This is our last question. And um, so, and I think it's Lisa, it's your turn. What are areas that Olympia can collaborate in with the cities of Lacey and Tumwater? What are areas? <clears throat> Homelessness, we've gone over that. I think it has to be a regional process. I think we have to agree to a generalized plan. Like for example, the Housing First, the Home Fund. The Home Fund is only preparing for 250 beds. That's only about one third of the people that we think we need to house with wraparound mm -hmm. services. So we should reach out to our fellow cities and say, how about you picking up the other two thirds and we will help you craft this as with our experience, with our own initiative and how this worked and what didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, so the homelessness, we should certainly reach out. And I, I have spoken with several of the other counselors for the other cities and they are very aware of it and they wanna reach out back to us. The second thing is I would like to reach out to them in terms of an environmental plan because the three cities, we all live together, work together. I would like to have a much better adequate inner community, inner city transit system so that you can live in one and work in the other and not get in your car. Lastly, I am 100% behind the estuary. I think it's a state, a county, and all three communities issue. It's a financial environmental benefit to turn this back into the estuary that it was. 
I think the cities should make and bond in a much more uh, fluid manner with maybe even planned retreats because I just mentioned a few. There are going to be a few more that are going to come up and if we have a good unit, we will deal with all of them. Very good. <laughs> Deborah. Um, I agree with Lisa mm -hmm. on, on all of the issues, um, especially the homelessness and environment. Mm -hmm. um, we definitely need to collaborate um, with all the cities mm -hmm. uh, and um, come up with a very good plan um, with you know the projected growth that it's not just going to hit Olympia, it's hitting our region. Um, so, and again, I can't reiterate, we are in this together. Um, the other thing is, uh, you know, uh, uh, children, vulnerable children. Um, we have, uh, right now we have, you know, folks that are in their, their pockets, in their, in their varied cities, um, working to assist children who don't get to eat in the summertime. Um, we could definitely do a better job at collaborating on, um, on the social issues, uh, you know, for, for our children, for our homeless, um, for our vulnerable uh, families. So, okay, yeah. thank you, thank you. We definitely need to collaborate on homelessness. It's, it is a regional mm -hmm. issue. We also need to collaborate under the under the Paris Agreement. We do need to continue to lower our carbon mm -hmm. loading, and we can do that on a regional basis mm -hmm. uh, through uh, improved transit, uh, through collaborating with inner city transit, bringing more uh, multimodal uh, type of types of uh, transportation, you know, through bikes and and uh, the buses. Um, we also, uh, through our, uh, you know, our current lot sewage treatment system, we are collaborating on that. We need to continue to collaborate on that to make sure that it is um, not going to be vulnerable to sea level rise, and we make sure that we yeah. protect that um, multi-million dollar investment uh, that, we've, that we have made. So. Yeah. And you know, as a school board member, we actually did meet with the city council at least once a year, and I think uh, we should make sure that the city council is meeting with the commissioners the, on the county basis and with the uh, Tumwater City Council and the Lacey City Council at least on an annual basis. And make sure that we're on the same page. Well, very thoughtful answers to our questions. Now each one of you has one minute to, for a final statement and then you can go home. <laughs> so, Deborah, you want to start final yeah. statement? Yes. Um, I love Olympia and feel so fortunate that we were, my husband and I were able to raise our two children here. They attended great public schools and um, including Running Start at SPSCC mm. where um, our daughter graduated from. Uh, my husband and I have been together for 35 years and we plan to spend the rest of our life here in Olympia. Um, we are going to have a lot more neighbors in Olympia and they're arriving every day. I want to make sure that they have the same great opportunities that we had. Um, good jobs, good housing, good education for um, children who live in safe and friendly neighborhoods. Uh, there are a lot, a lot of great candidates running uh, for office right now. And we're all committed to protecting um, our environment, public safety, and lifting up the most vulnerable. So with your vote, I will work hard to represent your voice on city government. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Alan. Thank you. I'm Alan Miller. I'm a fourth generation Washingtonian. It's been great to have lived the last 35 years of my life in the state capital of uh, a place where my great grandfather came in 1880, back in pioneer days. I've been an environmental lawyer, uh, I've raised three Olympia High School grads, and I've been involved in the community on the school board, on the planning commission. One of the first projects I, when I came to town in 1982, we were debating whether or not the Washington Center for the Performing Arts should be created and should it be in downtown or should it be over by where uh, the Thriftway uh, was. Uh, and so I'm glad that we put it downtown because downtown is the core of our community and we need to make sure that we solve the problem of homelessness in downtown. And so I'd appreciate your vote. Look at voteallenmiller.com for further information and I'd appreciate your support. Thank you. Lisa? 
I am a veterinarian. I say that because that's part of my job. I'm also a small business owner. I have two small businesses in downtown Olympia. I live in downtown Olympia. This community has already given me so much. It's my turn to turn around and give it something back to the community. I believe in the people of Olympia. I have gotten to know the people of Olympia as being a veterinarian. There are some amazing people in this town. I think we can do almost anything we set our mind to. My job in the past when I worked for my association to give back to my profession was to build coalitions, to work with federal government, to even lobby at Congress and at the state level. I just got done running the Washington State Veterinary Medical Association, building coalitions, working together, bringing in the experts when you don't know the answer is what I can bring to the city council. I believe in the people of Olympia. We have the answer. We just need to bring it to city council. I'm Lisa Parshley, running for Olympia city council position number five. Thank you very much. Thank you for participating in the League of Women Voters primary election forum for Olympia City Council P position five. We encourage viewers to vote in the primary election, August 1, 2017. Mark that date. Particularly, we want to thank Thurston County Media for their ongoing support and their assistance. Thank you.